Hi guys, it's Andrew here from East Made Wood Splitters today and welcome back to the East Made channel. I'm out here on a beautiful, gorgeous fall day and I'm gonna try and answer a handful of questions that we get asked about these wood splitters. Um, I had a couple of guys asking after I posted the wood splitter warm up video to do a warm up video on the wood splitters. I will post the uh, splitter warm up or the processor warm up video up here somewhere so you can check it out if you want to. Um, but I'll uh, tell you what's going on with these things guys. It's a, uh, it's really not a very scientific uh, process here to warm up one of these wood splitters. It's a uh, small engine, it's a Vanguard small engine, it's very similar to any other small engine. Uh, Vanguard doesn't even actually have a warm up procedure uh, for, uh, for these engines. They, you can look and they have different oil viscosities depending on your climate and uh, whereabouts you are and you'll find that in the owner's manual. Uh, the Briggs Moners manual which comes with your log splitter um, and it'll be in there so depending on whereabouts you are you have to look and see what viscosity of oil they're wanting you to run in it um, other than that other than that guys I would probably run them about half throttle for for 10 or 15 minutes and just cycle the cylinder the main cylinder in and out um, for probably a couple of minutes after that just until and get some of the oil moving around before you put too much of a load on this. And this is this goes for a cold morning, guys. If it's uh, if it's above freezing, you probably don't need to worry about it all that much. The oil viscosity is going to be uh, the oil is going to be thin enough that it's going to be able to get around the relief valves and uh, and function properly. And that's more or less what happens with these. Is uh, um, in the winter time, if you ever tried to pour out hydraulic oil or bar oil or anything like that. It's very, very thick until until it gets moving and gets warmed up. So what that does is when it comes up against a relief valve, it's a lot harder to flow across a relief valve, and that's where you'd have any issues. So in terms of that, guys, if you're wondering if you have the oil hot enough, you can actually feel it and just see like um, these uh, coming into the pump. You should be able to just grab hold of the line, and you'll be able to feel and see if there is. Uh, if there's any temperature, if it's warmed up at all, you'll be able to feel it with your bare hand. Uh, it won't burn you, it won't do anything like that, but it'll give you a really good indication if the oil is getting warm enough to be able to run that splitter. And again, on a cold day, guys, below freezing. Um, in terms of maintenance on one of these wood splitters, there's really not a whole lot, guys. Um, it's a very, very basic, simple piece of equipment. There's not a whole lot there. Again, you have the engine maintenance this is outlined in the briggs owner's manual which comes with your machine depending on which engine you have with it um the braking periods may be a little bit different one one engine might be a little bit different than the other whether it's a single or a v-twin but all of that stuff is outlined in there and again it's very basic uh small engine maintenance guys uh change oil after eight hours break-in period um every couple hundred hours after that kind of stuff it's very very simple very basic it's very easy to do guys all of it is outlined in the owner's manual a couple of things that i would watch for if i were you um one would be your air filter uh we actually have a really really neat air filter on these it's called, called a cyclonic air filter it will actually dump any large chunks out of it and uh save you from having anything plugged up so if you look at this this actually has a a little rubber on here if we pull the air filter out which is right in here it's very very simple guys i would check this um because of our conditions i check it i check it once a day just to make sure it's not too dirty um you'll know your environment after you check it a couple times whether you need to or not um but that's the air filter on it it's very easy to get out you'll be able to top it and see if there is any dirt in it uh this is the standard briggs air filter that thing there you can pick it up at uh any pv mart rule king um any auto parts these are very very common filters guys it's a brig built briggs filter you'll have no problem with it the nice thing about these is this cyclonic air filter though if you take a look at this yeah. you can see the air comes in here and underneath here i don't know if you can see that or not but it comes up through this hole in around your air filter it gets sucked in here around it and then what will happen is it spirals around here and then any of the big chunks actually come out of it that's a standard on all of our all of our wood splitters with a small engine on it you can see that just pops right back in there and uh the lid goes back on so again very simple very easy very very basic um changing the oil in one of these things it's again it's a normal brake small engine it is just right here 
The only other thing that I would be concerned about with the engine is fuel. Um, up in Canada, we have fairly good fuel. We don't have near the fuel problems that you guys have down south in the United States. You guys run a lot of fuel with ethanol in it. Um, run high test in these guys. It's gonna save you a lot of a lot of aggravation on the road. It's gonna cost a little bit more to buy the high test, um, but it's going to be a lot better fuel. And if you get ethanol free, that's even better. That's uh, that's the killer with these engines because it'll take the tarnish off of things and it'll plug up carburetor jets. And uh, for some reason, all small engines seem to hate that. So get ethanol fuel, free fuel if you can and and premium fuel for them. Um, and uh, with these, uh, with the singles here, it's uh, it's actually got an automatic fuel shut off on it. So when you shut the uh, shut the engine off on, on one of these Vanguards, it actually shuts the fuel off. So that's really, really nice because a lot of small engines have two separate levers for that. The problem with that is if you forget to shut the fuel off on, on some of the other small engines, you take it down the road, it's gonna flood the engine out. You're gonna be pulling spark plugs out, getting fuel out of it. You're gonna be draining oil for something as simple as that. These engines are really, really, really good for that. The only thing I would probably recommend doing is if you are gonna put one of these things away for the season, uh, I would just drain, drain the fuel out of the carburetor. It's very, very simple. Again, there's your fuel bowl for your carburetor and then that's the drain plug for you. If you just pull that out and drain the fuel and put a little bit of fuel stabilizer in your tank uh you'll be you'll be in good good shape with it um come over here and i'll show you one of the v twins they're a little bit different again fuel stabilizer is going to go a long way in one of these things what i would do with one of these is i would put the fuel stabilizer in the tank itself make sure it has time to run up through there maybe five or ten minutes and then simply unhook the fuel and let the carburetor let the carburetor run out that's going to make sure that there's very minimal amount of fuel in the carburetor when you go to put this away and with the fuel stabilizer it should really help prevent any tarnishing if you want to get away from that from all this gasoline stuff well i've got the solution for you that's a big advantage of going up to one of the diesel machines guys you don't need to worry about fuel near as much and a lot of guys will have fuel wherever they are, whether it's on the farm or in their work truck, whatever, they'll have diesel fuel. Um, again, guys, the big thing you gotta worry about with the diesels is whether or not there's water in the fuel. It's a very common thing with diesel. Um, you're gonna run into it. You normally run into moisture. You normally run into moisture in your fuel if you're pulling this thing in and out of the, uh, in and out of the shop, in and out of the cold, in the heat. That's where you get moisture in one of these. And again, you can put fuel stabilizer in for the diesel it takes a very small amount there's a very small tank i'm going to say like a tablespoon uh most diesel fuel conditioners are meant to do large bulk tanks so you can put a little bit in there it's going to help with any water or moisture that's in your fuel and it's going to last a long long time for you guys uh the next big thing is going to be lubrication for the pusher and uh, this is something that's a pretty big misconception i think we have a grease fitting on the pushers here that uh, you pump grease full of. I'll, show, I'll try and get in here and show you guys. Um, so you can see there is there is grease on that beam. There is a grease fitting down in here. You can see it right there. Hopefully you can see that. And you pump that full of grease. And you bring the pusher head. You have good access to that. You can pump it full of grease. There is a slot in the wear plate right here. There's a slot in the middle here. So when you stroke the pusher down, and actually uh it will actually put more grease onto the beam once these wear plates are saturated with grease you do not need near as much grease on them you will actually see this start to become moist you'll see that phenolic actually start to get moisture in there once you have that that's a lot like brass and you don't need anywhere near as much moisture in that um to keep it lubricated and what happens with these, if guys over grease them, it attracts dirt, it attracts uh, all the bark and stuff, sawdust will stick to it and then get underneath the pusher. So once it's saturated, um, first maybe 15 hours, I grease it a lot. After that, I would grease it every couple of times you do it in a minimal amount. It doesn't matter 
really what kind of grease you use here guys this is a wood splitter it's not a rocket ship it doesn't really matter what kind of grease you're on there um even a lot of guys will put bar oil on it on the beam that's fine that's not gonna hurt the oil is not gonna hurt even you put it on top of it it's just enough to keep that lubricated and reduce the friction friction is the name of the game here guys friction is what wears things out that's where you're going to run into issues so that's just the one thing to be conscious of there um the only other difference is when we get into an ultra or an axis you have to grease the beam i will show that maybe put an overlay on there so you can see where the grease is on these you put grease on the front of the beam the back of the beam and make sure they are well lubricated again this is just to reduce friction guys um on the alternate axis you can do this every single time you uh, there's no wear components on them the cylinder is uh, solid mounted so there's really no play in them so it's not it doesn't necessarily need wear components because there's not a whole lot to wear there unless the the, the it's pushing one way or the other really bad um there's not a lot to go on there other than that guys the only other thing probably the last part of this is going to be pivot points um there are several pivot points on an easter made wood splitter um every one of these pivot points has a replaceable nylon bushing in it so right here you can see that nylon bushing in there so there's one there one there here every single pivot on this machine has a replaceable nylon bushing this stuff is called nylotron nylotron is a self lubricating plastic you don't need to put any grease in these they will not seize up on you uh, we've run these we've run this stuff for years and years and years now uh, very very minimal issues unless you've been really rough on it that would be about the only instance where you may have to replace one of these nylon bushings and that really prevents the wear uh, on the steel components a lot, a lot of companies will run these things steel and steel and then you're once it's wore out you're, it's, it's wore out and it doesn't take very long um so the nylotron bushings aren't very expensive they might be nine or ten dollars i don't know i'd have to check the price on them again they're not very expensive you had to replace them uh would not cost you a whole lot to do so um very simple and easy you don't need any special tools a hammer and a punch will dry them out a hammer and a punch will put them back in um so in terms of maintenance in terms of warm up on one of these easter made splitters that's about all there is if there is something i missed drop a comment down below let me know uh, i'll do a video on I'll, I'll i want to keep you guys in the loop for what's going on around here um if you liked the video give her a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button on the bottom make sure you tune in for the next video and i really appreciate you taking the time to watch this one take care guys